Okay, great. Now I'd like to quickly review what Geomagic Freeform is all about. What we offer here is an organic and complex design software for manufacturing. It really is modeling without limitations. With Geomagic Freeform, you can model everything a traditional CAD system cannot do, as well as create complete manufacturable objects. In addition, Freeform is an ideal 3D printing analysis software so you can enjoy instant 3D printability. As you can see here, Freeform is currently being used in many diverse industries all across the board, like medical, toys, footwear, home decor, jewelry, and many more. Now I'd like to briefly review what new features are available in our latest release of Geomagic Freeform. We are very excited to finally announce that we're now offering mouse-enabled functionality in Freeform. This really is great news. In the past, you always needed a haptic attached in order to use Freeform, but now 70% of the tools are mouse-enabled, which provides some major benefits like better mobility. For example, designing in Freeform on a plane without a haptic device, or if you have a marketing meeting to attend and plan on going over a new design, but don't feel like dragging your haptic, this new version of ours will make this possible for you. Plus, Freeform is now ideal for a downloadable trial, so you can instantly try it out and see if our software solves problems for you. And for all of our resellers joining us today, this is great for you as well, because now your customers can go to our website, download a 15-day trial of Freeform, and immediately get a feel for what Freeform can do for them. The image right here is a great example of what you can create in Freeform with the mouse using the majority of the tools listed on this slide. Okay, now on to the next biggest feature of our new release. Printability analysis is a very robust new feature in Geomagic Freeform. Its purpose is to inform you of the problem areas up front during the actual design process, allowing you to catch mistakes that might end up costing you time or money. And everyone wants to save time and money, so this is crucial. For example, these bottom parts right here of this model um, are obviously way too thin for the print to be successful. So you can now run the printability analyzer to determine this and fix the problem before you send the model to your printer. And Greg George will be going over this workflow shortly. You can now design with confidence that your final freeform model will be print ready once your work is complete. And once again, this awesome new feature saves you time and money by ensuring your 3D print turns out right the first time. Okay, now on to another feature. Sense integration in Geomagic Freeform makes it possible for you to start a scan and import it directly into Geomagic Freeform. The Sense Scanner is a very cost-effective and great tool for a variety of 3D scanning uses, like as a quick start to modeling, then to creating mashups and other design options. The middle image here is one of our colleagues who we scanned actually using the scan. Then we brought the data right into Freeform, did some quick sculpting and modifications to then turn our buddy here into an actual foosball player that we ended up 3D printing for our company foosball table. So there you go, a quick and easy scan model make workflow. Okay, we're gonna take another break for another poll question. Great, at this point, I'm gonna hand it off to Gregory George, our senior product specialist we will now give a general demo of the new feature for the next 30 minutes. During that time, everyone will be in listen mode only, but you're welcome to ask questions during the webinar in the chat box. At the end, we'll host a Q&A to answer as many questions as we can. Thanks again for everyone. Thanks a lot, Mike. There you go, Greg. Thanks a lot, Mike. <clears throat> I'm excited to show uh, the three different categories that uh, Mike presented, uh, the printability, mouse, and sense today. I figured I'd start out with the printability section. If you guys attended the Geomagic Design webinar, some of these tools will be familiar to you as, we, as we're 
putting them inside of all of our software products here and making them available in the design process. So for printability, the first thing that you need to do is select which printer you're working with in Freeform. And in order to do that, what we, what we do is go over to Tools, Options, and there's a new 3D printer category in here. In that 3D printer category, we have, you can see I have Cube X on there right now, but if I uh, toggle over to Projet 460 CJP, and uh, my settings change here, and you see here I have printability checking tools. These are the, the different types that Mike alluded to earlier, where we have uh, print, uh, printing volume, wall thickness, gap clearance, interlocking part, void removal, uh, material hole, and overhang. I'll go ahead and show three of those today. I, I'll go ahead and select the Project 460 and hit OK. And then I'll come over to the Printability Analysis tool, Printability Checking. It's going to be in the Analysis tools for you Freeform users that are familiar with our product. This is the icon right here in the Analysis tools. And then here is the Dynavar layout. And as you can see, starting from left to right, the, the analysis that I mentioned earlier, we have the volume, wall thickness. As you can see with this part, wall, fix, wall thickness would be a concern. So if I hit the wall thickness tool, I can hit analyze. And it'll just take it a second to calculate, and it'll highlight areas in green based on the printer selection. They're going to have a wall thickness issue, therefore saving me time, um, and maybe uh, saving me an error along the way in the design process. So you can see that we create a selection set. And that selection set can be used outside of this tool. So if you're working with a more organic shape and you have wall thickness issues, you can drop out of this tool and use that same exact selection to maybe create an offset or only modify those areas of the model. So creating a selection set is a real valuable tool uh, for checking the wall thickness. So I'll go ahead and turn that one off and clear it. The next thing I'm going to go ahead and show is uh, the interlocking part. Uh, many of you guys know that with additive manufacturing, 3D printing technology, uh, one of the huge benefits is the fact that you can manufacture interlocking parts. Um, but when you design those, you need to make sure that they will interlock with each other but yet move freely along the uh, once it's printed out that the parts will move freely within each other. So this is a popular uh, tool to go ahead and check this type of part. So I'm going to go ahead and hit interlocking and close part and hit analyze and it's going to go ahead and analyze it and tell me if, if it's going to have an issue with the 460 printer that we selected earlier. You can see here that it says it doesn't have any problems detected, so it's going to print just fine. So if I come back over to the Tools Options, 3D Printer, and go to a different type of printer that has a different set of specifications, I can hit Analyze, and this will show you how it highlights. So it will show you some areas that are going to have an issue with that type of printing technology. So from here, the idea is that I would have to create more clearance in order to have freely moving parts after I print the print this type of chain piece. So the next thing I want to show is uh, voids. This is another uh, popular tool here. As you can see, I have a visual void on the inside. If I hit the transparency, you can see there. But if, if I'm working with this part and I may have smaller areas that I can't see and I need to check it, maybe I want this to be a solid part. Many times when you print you may save material by offsetting to the inside and uh, have a hollow part. But you want to make sure you have control over that. So in order to make sure that this is going to be a solid part, I'll run this void tool and hit analyze. And it'll go through that model and try to find the internal voids. And it says that it has voids. I hit OK. It changes to a transparent mode and creates a selection set of that void. So I can go ahead and remove that internal piece. So you can see, those are three tools that I happen to use all the time. 
But there are some others I'll just highlight. Uh, one is overhang. So if I have a part in a certain orientation, I can control the direction here. I can check to make sure that that part with that amount of overhang will print properly. And I can even change the direction and flip-flop it around to print it in a better direction so I have less overhang. And another one that's interesting too is depending on the print engine that you're using, uh, the removal material removal hole based on which tile you're using, you may have to have one and then we can check to see if your hole is large enough to remove the material that you're working with. So that's just a general overview of the of the printability tools that we added to Freeform. Uh, the next section uh, that Mike mentioned is the mousification. As you can see right now, my interface looks very similar to the last version because I have the haptic plugged in right now. So all the icons are here in the, in the toolbars, but um, we, we added the ability to uh, work with many of these tools with a mouse only interface. So why would we uh, go with a mouse interface? As Mike, as Mike mentioned before, because of mobility, I know that now that I have the ability to run Freeform on a day-to-day -day basis as an employee, I, I'm using this uh, quite a bit just to open files, to check files, maybe I'm at an airport or a Starbucks, I'm all over. As you know, Freeform is a is a very free form software, right, where I can, I can design and, and have freedom that CAD packages don't have. Well, why not have the freedom to design anywhere as well with a, uh, without a haptic device if necessary? And of course, the trial version, highlighting it, if you want to go to 3D Systems, you can, you can download a 15-day trial straight from the website, and you can try it out you know, today if you want to and get, get aware of how the tools work and the different pieces of functionality that we have. So you can see that I have the full interface right now. What I'm going to do is go ahead and unplug my haptic device. And it'll tell me that it's not able to uh, talk to the haptic device. And I'm going to go ahead and close the software down. And then I'll reopen it. And it'll, it'll reconfigure my interface to show me the tools that I can use with the mouse only interface. And of course, because I unplugged it and closed it, it'll ask me if I want to recover my old file. That's typical with the uh, with Freeform of the past. You, you also notice how quickly Freeform in general just opens. I'm able to disconnect it, restart it. So this is what um, Freeform looks like um, without the haptic plugged in. So you see Freeform users out there, you'll recognize a subset of the tools. Um, these are the ones that make sense to, to use with the mouse right out of the gate. Um, as you can see here, I still have all my sketching tools and curve tools and some sculpting tools over here. And I'll highlight some of these along the way. Um, <clears throat> so the next thing I'm going to do is just show some of the tools and how they work. I'll go ahead and create a new file. And I'll just start with a basic shape. I'm just going to rotate the part here and uh, just grab a couple tools. Uh, some of the popular tools people use are the, you know, for instance, the tug tool. So just like before, I have the same shortcuts and everything. I can use the plus and minus tool. And with the mouse, I can just click and drag, you see here, and tug on the surface of this part. So you see I'm able to, again, I'm using the mouse. It's hard to translate that over the web using the GoToMeeting, but you can see that I can just tug on the clay and modify the part here. Another one. Um, just to show different types of tools and how we were able to integrate a mouse instead of a haptic. Um, you know, just a basic, um, you know, reposition piece. You see here, I click on the tool, I automatically get this gimbal, and I can click and just drag and move. And this type of interface actually is very, very intuitive. Uh, you know, people that haven't used a haptic device at all will feel at home modifying an object this way. So you can see I can you know, click and drag and rotate around. And I have different gimbal settings. I can right click on the gimbal and change a bunch of different settings there with the snapping and rotation. One that I like to use is this view lock to axis. So no matter which way I use, I rotate the part, I can actually just move in a 2D fashion, rotate in a 2D fashion, but if I just move to another perspective, I can move the part. So that's a 
that's a very helpful one. And that's all by right clicking on the gimbal itself. I'll just switch back to local. Another one um, that's kind of intuitive to use with the mouse, another tool, is the paint play. And you see here, I can change the plus minus. So you could conceivably just bring in a scan from maybe the sense and just quickly use the mouse only to paint and, and do a little bit of color correction on a part and not have to break out the haptic if you're traveling or something. So that's, you know, I can go ahead and paint. You just see that it just makes the tool normal to the surface of the part as I rotate around. So that's the, that's the way we're able to use the same tool just with a different type of interface. Uh, another one that actually is really intuitive with a mouse only interface is sketching. If I just create a plane here in space and I right click and say I want to sketch on that plane, uh, for many people sketching with a mouse is more intuitive. So if I just draw this shape here, I'm just going to draw a random curve shape. Let me rotate around. You see that it's a 2D curve and 3D space there. If I come over to the inflate tool, which is another tool that I have the ability to use in the mouse, with a mouse, I can select that boundary and then I can just inflate it. You know, so I can, you can conceivably, you know, import uh, 2D geometry from Illustrator, 2D curves, and create a signage with this, you know, import it straight to plane and inflate it and sculpt it with a mouse only. So if I just go ahead and hit apply, you see here that, that I went ahead and inflated that 2D curve. Um, so those are a couple different tools um, with clay, um, but we also went ahead and enabled uh, the sub-D surfacing tools as well. So I'll just, to, to get this stuff off the screen, I'll go ahead and hide all these uh, pieces of clay in my plane. And I'll just create a sub-D shape. Let's say new subdivisional surface. Fit that to screen. And just show you um, how, how you can edit a sub-D surface with a mouse as well. So there's my basic sub-D uh, cube. If I just click on that face, you can see that I have that same gimbal and I can drag it up and down. And uh, that was clicking on a face. I can also, of course, do the vertices. So I can drag those over and up. And uh, for other tools out in this space, um, this is a familiar way of working with sub-Ds. So, you know, this will, this will make people feel more at home and freeform just being able to use a mouse or the haptic. Uh, modeling subdivision surfaces. So I can also, if I go ahead and undo a couple of those things here, I can also add symmetry. Um, so if I click on here, just like before, if I click on there and I say add a planar symmetry and then go back over and move this, you see here that I can add planar symmetry and I can add many levels of symmetry. So if I select this, this corner too, and now when I grab this, you'll see here that I can do that in that direction or this direction. And, oh, I added, yeah, I added symmetry in two different directions. You can, you can also add a radio symmetry as well um, if you want to. So that's how the symmetry tool works in here. And then, of course, all the basic things that you have before, if you want to extrude a face, you click on it, and then you grab this this uh, arrow here, so I can go ahead and extrude the face. I click again and extrude the face and, uh, and work with it that way. And then if I want to subdivide, I can go ahead and click on the midpoint there and subdivide that and then go back and drag it here. So you see those are just common tools that people use Freeform already. I'm just showing how to, how to manipulate them and work with it um, with a mouse only. Um, so, that, so that's a really nice piece of functionality um, to, to just go ahead and use sub-D. And of course, this is functionality that's already in there, but you can go ahead and convert that subdivision surface to a variety of other models. You can convert it to a solid, a mesh, or clay, and uh, you know, integrate it somewhere else in your design workflow. So that's a little overview of the mouse interaction. Uh, as you can see, there are lots of different tools that I can show. Um, but that's just an overview of some of the ones that I know I use with a mouse, and it's just really handy 
to have available. The third thing that uh, that we mentioned is the integration of the set. So I'll just create a new file. Start with an empty file. And uh, what we're finding is the set scanner, for those of you guys uh, that um, haven't seen it yet, I believe we released it at CES, and it's been extremely popular. I get people asking me all the time about it. Even my neighbors down the street are asking about the set scanner because it's a, it's a groundbreaking device. It, it, it has a very large price to performance ratio. For $400, you get a really good product um, that can scan anything from a basketball up to a person. And as you can see, this image here that uh, Mike showed earlier, you can run this on Win 7, Win 8, and Mac OS right now. And as I mentioned before, here are the scan volumes in meters, so 0.2 meters to 3 meters. And the way I describe it, like I said before, is a basketball to like a person, a six foot tall person around there. And it has a USB 2 or 3 interface, the cord here that plugs into the laptop. So I have one of these on my desk right now. And what I can do is scan directly inside a Freeform. I feel like it's a really good product pairing. They work really well together. I can scan people extremely easy with this scanner and uh, bring them into Freeform and uh, modify them and print them. So if I come over here to the File menu and come down to Import from Sense, those of you that have used Sense will recognize what we're doing is opening, opening up the Sense uh, software, and it has a little wizard that it takes me through. So I, I'm going to say I want to scan an object that's of medium size. And today I'm just going to scan this bike seat here. So I'll go ahead and point it at the object that I'm looking at scanning here. And I can hit the Start button or the Space bar. And it gives me a little countdown. This works really well for scanning people. I get a countdown. And you see that I go around the bike seat. And it's dynamically aligning to the object. You know, I'm, I'm pointing the scanner at it. I'm holding it by hand. Just scanning this bike seat that we have in our office. Let's go around the object, and then I'm done. So I'll go ahead and hit the space bar to complete it. And then, and I have a little wizard here at the bottom. I can resume the scan. So if I point the scanner right at this area that I left off at, I can actually realign to it and keep on scanning if I want, or I can just hit next. What it'll do is it'll pre-process that scan and and leave it here on screen and give me some tools to work with it if I want. I can crop it. So the first thing that it's going to do is pop up with my cropping screen. I can, of course, crop this inside of Freeform. But if I'm only interested in the bike seat, I can very quickly just select the cropping tool, window into this area, just hit Enter, and it'll crop everything outside of that window. I can rotate around and look at the part. The solidify is really neat too. If you're scanning people and you have some missed areas, you can click this solidify and it'll automatically fill all the holes and make it a solid part for printing. It works pretty well considering the amount of work it has to do in the background if you don't scan the entire object. The solidify tool works really well. I'm going to leave that alone because I'll solidify that over inside of Freeform. But if I hit next, you can see I have the color. Um, this is all in the sense software. So if you guys own a sense already, you can see you can do this stuff already. This is just uh, working, showing you how I can modify the data, and tweak the clarity and the contrast. And then I can also trim and do the touch up, which will actually remove defects in the surface if I want to. So I'll turn that off and hit next. So now it goes ahead and dumps that back in inside of Freeform. So I walk through that wizard and I have the ability now to take the scan data and work with it. So, you know, if I don't want the rest of this bike, you see that it is disconnected. So I can come over to the mesh tools and just use the C point and click on it and select that whole object. 
select that whole object, I can individually select them that way. Or I can just select the one that I want to keep and inverse the selection and delete everything else. And you'll recognize uh, this is a polygon object. So it dumped in a, a polygon that I can work with. If I want to come in and just crop it again, using the same tools, I can come back to just selection. And I can just, with the mouse, again, I'm, I'm editing it with the mouse, just select and delete. If I, want, if I don't want that area, you know, I can just trace along the shape of this part. And then using that same tool, I'll just select the piece that I want to keep, inverse selection, and, oops, inverse selection and delete. So I'll go ahead and clear my selection and meet the seed point. There we go. And then delete that. So you see it's not a solid yet, but if I want to create that solid, I'll go ahead and uh, turn that off and come up here to the mesh tools and just say copy the clay. And I can make this whatever resolution I want. I can just say uh, one resolution, uh, one millimeter, and I can say fill all holes and make this a clay object. And it'll give me a preview. That's what it's doing right now is calculating that preview. So if I hit apply, it's going to go ahead and convert that to clay or voxels. And you see here that it automatically filled the bottom. So again, just highlighting some of those mouse tools I want to reposition my origin to the center of that clay there. And I come over to reposition piece. I can just drag this and move it near the, just manually move it near the origin if I want to. And I can rotate the part, you know, so I can rotate the, the part. Let's uh, rotate this direction. So that's good. And then I'll rotate this direction. You can see here that you know maybe I want to just square this up just visually to the world coordinate system. And if I want to, I can go ahead and create a plane and just make it through make that plane through the origin. And then using some familiar tools, you see here, visually I can see that it's not quite through the origin, so well, it's not quite aligned with the origin. I can, um, I can come here, I can move it back and forth if I want to. Go ahead and move that part. I rotate it. And if I want to make it a symmetrical seat, because you know, anything that I scan in real life is not going to be perfect. I can go ahead and make it symmetrical by coming into the mirror tool and just using that plane that I just created. And I can just say preview and I can flip the direction if I want to, whichever side. And then I just went ahead and mirrored that part across the across the center. And of course, um, if I turn off the color show quick so you can see me uh, working with the shape of the clay, it just makes it easier to see. I have a little bit of a witness in that. I can grab the hot wax tool. And just kind of blend the part. Just kind of blend across the, the surface there. I can melt. You see here that I have the add material, but if I just change it to smooth, I can smooth out areas with the hot wax tool. Or I can select the whole thing and hit smooth and just kind of relax the whole surface. So you can see here, I, I was able to quickly just scan something and dump it inside of, of Freeform and work with it. Sometimes it, I can start with an object that's part of the way there, scan it, or take something that I started by working by hand and scan it inside and then add detail with Freeform after. It's a really powerful tool uh, to use together, Sense and Freeform. So those are the things that I wanted to cover today. Um, new features that we're excited about at 3D Systems. I believe we have another poll question uh, that we wanted to throw up uh, before we go into a Q&A where people can ask questions and we'll, we'll give our best answers. Thank you, Greg. Uh, we're going to leave the poll open here for just another moment. About 75% of everyone has 
uh, answer the poll question. So we'll give it just another moment and we'll close it and then we will open it up to Q&A. So uh, if you have any questions and you haven't asked those through the, uh, the question box in GoToWebinar, feel free to type your questions in and then uh, those that apply to everyone that everyone would benefit from hearing the answer to, we'll read those off and uh, Greg and Mike Joyce will answer those questions live here for you. Okay, so we're going to close the poll and we're going to move on to Q&A now. So we already have a few questions that have come in uh, and again if you haven't asked a question yet that you want to ask, please go ahead and ask that through the question box in the GoToWebinar window. Okay, so the first question we have, uh, Greg and, and Mike, is uh, how does Freeform know what direction it's pulling in uh, when you're using the mouse? Uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and take that. Uh, depending on the tool, it's using the surface normals in order to, for example, the, the hot wax tool, um, the surface normals depending on what setting I have the hot wax tool, whether it's add, remove, or smooth, it's using those directions for, to, to activate the tool when I click it. Now things like the tug, that's a little bit different because it, it also grabs your perspective on the part. So you kind of have like a 2D coordinate system of your screen, uh, a point that you're clicking on the model. So it factors in the normal direction of the area of the model that you're working with, but it also will use the 2D directions of my, me dragging up and sideways to help give me a direction. And just as a sample, I'll, I'll use this tool real quick just to give you an idea. If I click on here and I just pull up, it's kind of just normal to the surface. And if I click and I drag sideways, you see that I, I'm able to go kind of in like a three-axis direction. It really take it would take some experiment uh, experimenting for you to kind of understand how it's working, but you see here I'm able to move sideways because I have two two degrees of freedom that I'm working with plus the normal direction of the play. So that's what I would say if if that makes sense to you guys. Great, thank you, Greg. Uh, the next question is: Does Freeform Plus handle UV maps? and does it mesh point clouds and decimate from uh, this person gave the example of a Faro 3D scanner? Yeah, so we can bring in color um, with, with polygon uh, scans. We can bring those in and we can even touch up. So you can see that I got color from my, I'll go ahead and turn it on from my scanner and of course when I smooth that changes the color but um, so I, I can bring in color and I can add to it so it's like you have a layer of color on top of the this, the color scan that you have and the other aspect that you asked about is if I bring in uh, data from like a, let's say a Faro or another type of scanner can I can I reduce it I do have mesh tools in here and we call it reduce in this product which is just like a decimate tool in our other products. So yes, I can import data from devices like that and depending on the device I can bring in the color and I can reduce it and clean it and work with it in a similar way that we do in our other products. Now again, this is freeform so the tools are centered around clay and voxels but we do have a, a, bunch, of, a bunch of mesh tools that we can use on that type of information. Okay, and the next question is, do you have to use Freeform with the Sense Scanner? Yes, so that's one thing that I didn't highlight. Uh, the Sense Scanner is a standalone product that has its own software component when you purchase it. So you don't have to have Freeform. You can, you can load it up on, on another device. Uh, actually, I run it on a Surface Pro that has full windows, that's just as an example. I run that on my Surface Pro alone 
and I walk around and scan people with it all the time. And at the end of the wizard, it doesn't show up when you're using it with Freeform, but you do have the ability to save the file or upload it to Cubify if you want, depending on if you're connected to the internet. So yes, it's a standalone product, standalone software solution as well. Okay, another sense scanner question. How long is the core for the sense scanner? I believe that it's about six feet long right now. Um, so there are some people that choose to use it with an extension, a USB extension cord. So if you're going to be using a desktop or a laptop, it really does help to have an extension. With me, I don't tend to have that issue because, like I said, I'm using it with the uh, Surface Pro, which allows me to just freely walk around uh, the object or person and scan. So I'm able to do it that way, and I don't worry about the cord length. Okay, and uh, another question is, uh, back to Freeform, can we import the data from Freeform into a parametric modeling software like Inventor to dimension and modify the file? It depends on what type of file you're working with because Freeform does work with a variety of different model types and without diving into all the different types, I'll just say that you know we've, we've hinted at using meshes and voxels or clay it does work with nerve surfaces or solids and subdivisional surfaces. It depends on which type of model you're working with, uh, what Inventor can handle. So I believe Inventor, of course, can work in nerves and solids because that's what its design is. Uh, many of these CAD packages can bring in a lightweight mesh file and use it as a reference, but they don't have many tools to to integrate it into their manufacturing process. Um, but I will say if you're working with clay and sub-D sub surfaces, those actually come across very well. Uh, we also do have a tool inside of here where I can take a clay object and auto-surface it into a NURB surface, and that will dump inside of the CAD package of choice and you can use it. Now, it's not going to be a parametric model, so things like booleans and, and cuts and merges and things like that will all work on that surface body, but it will not have a history tree that you may be familiar with if you're using that type of device. And another preform question, can the software add material like filling holes or, or sculpt missing pieces after scanning? Yes, absolutely. Um, you can, um, you know, just as a sample, if I grab this, I can, this is a simple way of working, answering the question. I can, I can grab this cube and manipulate it, move it around on screen here. Go ahead and turn that one off. just say I want to put a cube right in the middle of this seat for some reason. I'm able to create that shape as a new piece or merge it with the existing piece. So in this case I merged it with the existing piece and then I can blend it in. So if I want to just create shapes to go along with it, I can do that. I can merge it in. Or I can just sculpt the missing area. It does happen when I'm scanning people quite often. I even have a stock uh, library almost of shoes and hands, uh, a women's hands and men's hands to bring in because sometimes we'll just miss an area and I'll convert it to clay and I will throw in a pair of shoes on the person or maybe the, uh, a, a hand that was missing in the scan. So I'm able to do that. I'm able to make up entire areas that are not in the scan. In a way you could think of it as like having a 3D Photoshop but I can manipulate the, the scan. So almost anything's possible, really, with the tools that you have in Freeform. Okay, another question. Can we buy the Freeform Plus software without the haptic device? Mike, do you want to answer that one? <laughs> yeah, I will. So for right now, you can't. 
but we will keep everyone posted when that will be available down the road. So for the short term, right, the present moment, the answer is no, but we'll keep you posted for sure. It will happen eventually. What is the difference between Freeform Plus and Geomagic Design X? Okay, so Design X, those of you that are familiar with um, our products will know that that is a, a history-based model or based on scan data. And what it gives you the ability to bridge the gap between CAD and scanning devices or any any device that gives you a mesh. You're able to clean that mesh, work with it, and then it gives you all the tools to then design from scan data and create a parametric model and then translate that over to a CAD package with the history tree. Um, so that's an extremely powerful product and there's nothing like that on the market today besides ours. Um, so that's what its target, its target uh, audience is, is the ability to take scan data, model it, and then hand it over to a CAD package in a native fashion so then they can continue their design process. The Freeform product extends CAD in a different way. CAD packages are very good at modeling and designing in a prismatic, feature-based world. Well, there are a lot of different products on the market that need to be manufactured that you maybe don't need history on or are very organic to a point to where the history can get away get in the way of a design process. So for example, toys in the toy aisle at the store, very difficult to model something like that in CAD package. So what you would use is freeform alongside of the CAD package to model all the organic shapes. And when we say organic shapes, you're talking about people, dinosaurs, very intricate complex shapes that otherwise would be very difficult to do inside of CAD. So its approach is to extend CAD in that direction where it's freeform shape modeling, but yet circle back around and dump its data back inside of CAD for manufacturing where the Design X product is going to take scan data from real life objects, help you design more prismatic shapes, but not always and dump that inside of CAD as well. So that would kind of give you an idea of the two different markets that, it, that they're designed to, to address. Okay, and uh, are these new features available in all Freeform products, meaning Clay Tools, Freeform, and Freeform Plus? Uh, Mike may need to just double check with me on this, but I'm pretty sure Freeform Plus and Freeform have these new features, but I'm not sure about Clay Tools. Maybe Mike can chime in on that and make sure that it's in there. We're working on a new product that eventually is going to replace Clay Tools, so you know, stay tuned, but Greg is right regarding uh, the functionality being in Freeform and Freeform Plus. And does Freeform support 3D mice like 3D Connection? Actually, during this demonstration, I was using the 3D connection, so I'm rotating it right now with the 3D connection device. The integration was outstanding. And can we paint the mesh with an external photo? You do have that ability in here. So you see here I have a wrap image. So I can come into the wrap image and select select the picture that I want to use and project that onto the surface of the part. So I can add to the color shape that I have. I was actually able to do that before where I was able to replace the color of a person's face on a, on a person scan using this. Um, right now in the mouse in a, interface you see that I have these two options. If I have haptic enabled I do have more um, options to work with the color on the surface of the part. So yeah, you can bring in images and project the color from those images onto the clay. Okay, and another question is, what about measurements? If I pull, for example, can I type how many inches I want it to move? Yeah, so when I use the tug command, for instance here, 
again, we are we we do give you the tools to just freely grab the clay, but there are instances, yes, where you want to be able to move that clay in a specific increment. So you see here that I do have the ability to use the ruler and move that in increments of one millimeter. So you see here I have snapping. So I can actually kind of have the best of both worlds where I can freely grab on and use maybe the tug tool and move it, but I can also use this ruler option and type in an increment and it'll snap to exact uh, dimensions, but yet be a freeform type tool. And this is not just in the tug tool. You have the ability to use the ruler and normal to restrict the tug normal to the clay. You have that in other, uh, other tools as well where necessary, where you're able to apply it. So you do have some you do have some control over how far you're moving something. It's not always just visual. Okay, and uh, another person is asking, is there a free trial of the software? And there is. I can answer that. And uh, in the GoToWebinar chat box, we just put the URL of uh, the website where you can go and fill in a form and uh, get the download link uh, for the free trial of the software. And this is really important because uh, until now, because of the requirement of having a haptic device to use free form uh, that previously was the case, there were no free trials. So uh, we're, we're really pleased now that we're able to offer free trials to those of you that don't have free form yet, you can actually now try it out using the mouse to begin with before uh, you make the decision to buy the software, uh, at which point, of course, uh, you should also get the haptic device. Uh, next question, uh, another person is asking, is it possible to use Freeform with another scanner than Sense? And, and yes, it is. Uh, Craig, you, you talked about that, so that question may have come in before you talked about using it with other scanners. Um, with sub-Ds, can you make a shape like a midsole into a sub-D from voxels? Sounds like we have a shoe uh, designer here. There, there are some ways of doing that. We do have the ability to fit a sub D to a clay piece, but it is, it is, uh, it's limited. You would have to have the sub D in a general shape that's close to the midsole, and then you, we can, we can kind of snap to it. There is an advanced tool that I, I don't have an example. Uh, but I can create a curved network and create it to a sub D, and then there's also ways of snapping a sub D to to a piece of clay. Um, it's something that if you wanted to, we, you could talk to your local uh, regional manager, and we could we could demonstrate that piece of functionality for you. But it is possible, but I won't say that it that it's a catch-all and to be able to snap them to anything. Um, there's some there's some special cases where it works really well and some that it doesn't. Another question here is: Do you recommend any liter literature or video tutorials for freeform? We do have some really good resources on YouTube. Um, we we have a bunch of broken out videos that show smaller chunks of functionality that are in a bite-sized piece. Um, and then we also have full workflows on there as well. YouTube has a, just a ton of freeform um, videos on there. So if you search there for freeform, you'll find quite a bit from us. And even some of our advanced users have, have stuff available online as well. Great, and we're now, uh, we've been uh, doing Q&A for about 15 minutes, so I think we'll wrap up at this point. Uh, if your questions didn't get answered uh, verbally, we will answer those offline with you. Um, we'll follow up because we have your contact information through GoToWebinar. So I want to thank everybody for joining us here today, and, and a big thanks to Mike Joyce and Greg George 
uh, for giving us this great overview and demo of the new features in Freeform. Thank you, everyone.